Hi, my name is Michael Gray and I am a digital mentor for the Weller Trend Vision Awards Runway category. Today's catwalk look I'm going to create on Chloe Alicia is a knotted braid continued through to the back with voluminous curls slick through the sides. I started off with prepping Chloe's hair with a setting spray, brushed it all through, made sure there was an even distribution and I blast dried them all in. I created a section through the top, um, it's like a half just get you to tilt your head forward. So it's like an, a nice sort of like oval shaped and then through the sides I brought all of them back and connect them into the middle. The remaining of the hair, I added some extensions in just to add a little bit more volume, add a little bit more hair, especially with catwalk as well. Never be afraid to go like too big with the hair. So if, even though Chloe's got lovely long blonde hair to past the shoulders, it's always nice to have like an extra bit of hair going through there, just to add some more volume to it. After I curled and pinned Chloe's hair at the back, I am literally just gonna go through this panel of hair now and I'm going to work in some product just to get a bit more of a structure through and I'm going to secure both sides at the back so they connect just below the crown so if I'm just going to get you to turn one second so I'm going to work the product through the sides and then I'm going to connect at the back to turn left. so I'm using a gel sort of paste just to work it through just get a little bit of structure through there and then i'm going to dry that in to get a bit more of a, a firm hold and i feel it's nice because you get a nice control with the hair and also adds a little bit of shine not being afraid to sort of like use my fingers even though you want to create a bit of a, a sleek sort of textured look, but it's also nice to sort of not be afraid and manipulate the hair as well. Just gonna use a bit of a comb just to help even distribute the product. I'm gonna go through again. don't be afraid to sort of like really separate that out get that product right in there just want a nice even distribution I think as hairdressers or hairstylists, we're so used to using tools all the time to sort of help work product in, but sometimes we always forget to use our hands because our hands are part of our craft as well. I'm gonna use my hair dryer, making sure it's a nice temperature. I'm gonna direct the heat away from the face and really sort of like work that product into the hair. And you can, if you want to, you can use a comb to have a bit more of a, a sleek result, but I quite like that texture that's going through there at the moment. And don't be afraid to go in a bit more and add a little bit more product in. Let's go 
it back through again. Wear that product in. You're keeping the hair dry, constantly moving, so there's no like focal point of the heat getting to the scalp. So it's nice client comfort. Let's switch it back around again. Work on the other side. Depending on the texture of hair as well, sometimes you might need to use a comb just to help with the direction of the hair going back. As the hair texture is a little bit more finer through the front, I am going to work a little bit more product in. As you can see, I'm not afraid to really sort of sculpt that product into the hair. Like I said, you can use a comb or you can use a brush, depending on the hair type, but I feel like it's created a nice structure through the sides. And the work through those mid lengths as well, just so there's no product build up. Once I feel happy with that, always don't be afraid to sort of step away from the hair as well. Sometimes as hairstylists, we're just so focused on looking one particular area. Don't be afraid to really sort of step away, have a look, have a look at different angles. Is that a nice shape going through? Is there enough product going through as well? So I think that is one thing that we do as stylists that we are such like big perfectionists, perfectionists of that we're so focused on like certain areas. So don't be afraid to just step back just for, you know, just for a few seconds and just have a look. So I'm just gonna gather the hair together at the back, making sure there's no loose strays of hairs connecting in, that shouldn't be. And I'm liking that texture that's going through. What I am going to do is I am going to use my comb just to help with that. Just for sort of any loose bits up here. I think it's always important as well to have like a toolbox with different sections so you know where everything is, that all put pins all like bundled up, clips at least you know where everything is and it's all nicely organized so once I'm happy with that I'm just going to smooth through that just a little bit more I'm going to connect with an elastic
making sure that you get really, really good control of the hair as well, so there's no tangles. And don't be afraid to sort of like, if you do want to sort of like soften it off so it isn't so smooth, you can just, just lightly tease that out. You can work a little bit more of a spray in there as well. Glam Mist is quite nice as well. So if you do have any sort of like flyaways, it just adds a nice bit of shine to it as well. I'm just gonna get around to the other side. Now I've done that section, I'm going to work onto the top section by creating a knotted braid. So I'm going to go through it again. braid is really cool especially if like you're not really confident with braiding I mean it looks quite technical but really it's just like tying shoelace so I've got those two strands from the front created another section from the second one I'm gonna bring both those two strands together I'm gonna separate them off into two and then I'm gonna create my loop again You can, if you want to, make sure that it's like a nice sort of like firm knot. If you want to add a bit more of like an editorial sort of like feel to it, or if you want to just sort of like loosen it off, you can start to sort of pull that knot out just to create a little bit more of a texture through it. I am going to, one second, lightly spray through just to help with a bit more of a control whilst taking my sections. Bring these sides back again. And then this section I've just knotted and bring forward. Whenever you're doing a hairstyle for catwalk, it's always one of those things where you've got so much that you need to consider with like makeup and like the attire that the model will be wearing as well. So it's one of those things that you're gonna have to tie in the hairstyle that, and your theme and how like, adding like textures and colors and tones. Now I'm coming to my final bits, knotting. Now I'm connecting with this ponytail. I'm actually gonna split that off into two. I'm gonna 
connect that knot with that ponytail just below the crown and I'm going to create my next knot there. So don't be afraid before securing that together to sort of step away again, have a look, different angles. Don't be afraid if you really want to sort of like loosen that braid out a little bit, create a little bit more height, always thinking of like shaping that as well. So you're thinking it's nice and sort of sleek through the sides. You want to add a little bit more texture through there. And then all of this hair is going to be nice and sort of like flowy as well. Thing that everyone's always going to be looking at different angles. And with this look as well, you could really sort of like play on it. Things that you can sort of step outside your comfort zone, really, if there's something that you really want to do there's something that you really want to sort of like execute as well that you feel like is very sort of catwalk related. What I am going to do is I'm going to secure it with a couple of pins at the back. I'm going to leave this down just to have a bit more of a fluid shape to it. So I'm not going to secure it there with an elastic. I'm just going to use a couple of pins just to secure in place. Because it is that knotted braid, you've got that structure through there already. Once I feel happy with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by working this bit of product through and then I'm going to add a little bit of texture and movement with curls. So I'm using quite a tight curling tongue. I thought about going for the smaller size, but I thought because I wanted to brush them out and get a nice soft texture, I think it's one of those things that don't be afraid to sort of try different products, see what products are going to work best for like the best result and different tools as well. Don't be afraid to try different techniques. And colour plays a big part in it as well. If you, if your model had like a brunette hair, then there's different factors you've got to sort of consider as well. How is this technique going to be showing off the same result as you were with the blonde hair? And like I said, if you had a model with brunette hair, so there's different things you've sort of got to take in to factor as well. With blonde hair, you can obviously see like the different tones that are going through with the curls. With someone with dark hair, you might struggle to get to define them or sort of see those tones. So that's one of the factors you've got to take into considera consideration when you are selecting a model for this. Don't be afraid to step away again, have a little look, different angles, have a look at the side, the transitions going through the back. Now I'm on to my last layer before I connect all this through. And don't be afraid, like I've just backcombed quite a bit just to soften those curls, but you can really go in there again and create as much height as you like. And if you've noticed, I've started from the center and then worked my way to the sides. So I've always got sort of like a central point that one side's not going to be bigger than the other. So 
step away, have a look at the shape that you're creating. Don't be afraid to really go through and manipulate any curls again, or if you want to define any curls. So now I've taken that top section down, it's really nice so you can sort of see the shape that is forming. Like I said earlier, I'm going to start with the centre and then I'm going to work my way through the sides. So I'm just going to brush that through again and lightly tease. And I love how that's, that knotted chain effect is just literally not as a solid piece, it's really sort of breaking that hairstyle up at the bottom. What I am going to do is I'm gonna take in consideration of what's in trend this season. And I feel like accessories are really like big parts. So like these chunky clips. And you can really look at what like placement you feel like is going to complement the look. So you can either go both sides or you can just go to like one side. I like securing clips in. So I'm just gonna go onto this side because I feel like it's going to complement my model. And I feel like it's gonna tie in with the attire that we're using as well. Use one and then I'm gonna use one opposite direction. So they don't have to be neat. Step away, have a little look, how that shape's forming. Do I like the placement of the clips? Do I not like the placement of the clips? And I feel like it just adds something a little bit different. This is my final look, so I'm just gonna get you to turn to the side. I've created a knotted braid through the top section, sleek the sides back, added a few extension pieces through the bottom to add a little bit more height and a little bit more volume to the hair, curled it and added a couple of X clips in there just to come on trend and just accessorize the total look.